hey. Well, sometimes do you feel just so blessed and almost like you're not of this world? <laughs> yeah, I do sometimes. Well, this lesson, and we were focusing on lesson 28 and 29, and I thought I'd stop and do a couple lessons that I usually go do when I go into the jail. I usually go into the jail on Fridays, and I share the gospel, and then I usually um, do a Bible study in there. And I've been doing it for over 20 years, and it's been an amazing place to go because I see lives changed. And I think you guys know about that. You say, Grandma's in the, in the jail, and you pray for me, and how cool is that? Well, I thought I'd stop here and do a Bible study from Jeremiah because, you see, Jeremiah was one that um, was during the Babylonian captivity. And he wrote um, a lot of, lot of verses that we have. Jeremiah was known as the crying prophet because he had to give a hard message to Israel and that they were going to go into captivity no matter what. So they might as well surrender. And that was a very new message um, for Israel because uh, most of the prophets had said to fight back and, and to protect the temple. And Jeremiah's message wasn't that way. God had actually changed his mind to allow Israel to go into captivity. Well, to stop right there for a second, have you ever got a card? Here's a card that one, one of... Um, Bella, your little friends um, did, it says, Beloved, and on the back it says, Thinking of You. Have you ever been someplace and you got a card and people were thinking about you and you're like, wow, you opened it up. Maybe you're on vacation or maybe you're away from your parents and they sent you a card somewhere and you opened it up and said, wow, I'm so glad that they're thinking of me. You know, God does that with us too. And this message is called Thinking of You. Postcards from God. And we go through the Bible and there are a lot of like um, verses that are like postcards. Postcards, but from God. Huh? So one of the best postcards from God comes from Jeremiah. And it is thinking of you. For Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you a hope and a future. That God wanted to give them a hope in the future and sending them into captivity in Babylon? How could that be? How could that be? But Jeremiah, he sees this. He sees the end of captivity and what God does in their hearts. You see, Jeremiah prophesied for them to surrender and that the time would be exactly 70 years in captivity. And then God would bring them back to the promised land. And we've already uh, studied about that, haven't we? So um, why did God allow them to go into captivity? Why does God allow us sometimes to go into captivity? You say, oh, what do you mean, Grandma? Well, yes, sometimes God allows us to go through hard times. And I give this message in the jail because guess what? They're in captivity. And most of the captivity they're in is because of their own sin. Well, Israel's captivity was because of their, their own sin, too, because they had disobeyed God and followed after idols. So why? Did God allow that? Well, because he said, he said, if you go after idols, this will happen to you. And they did not listen. Idolatry, it was called. And they couldn't stop worshiping those stupid idols. Can you see? I don't know why. They just, they were fascinated with them. And they were the idols of the pagan religions that were just made up. And they left their true and living God to worship them. You see, and God let them go into Babylon, and Babylon was the center of idol worship. The, they were worshiping, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of those idols. And here they were, gone from the promised land into Babylon. And God saying, okay, you want to worship those idols? Go worship those idols, huh? And so when they went in, they, they realized, and, and they, didn't, they wanted to go back to their home. They realized they didn't really want to worship those idols, that those idols were nothing, and that God was everything. So guess what? He sent them for 70 years. into the, and, the, and guess what? After 70 years, the Jews never went back to the so-called idol worship anymore. 
<laughs> it got those idols out of them. They never worshipped golden calves again, you know, although maybe some kinds of idols. Sometimes idols are things that we put above God. We know that. But they never went back to worship Babylonian idols. So, and I say in the jail, I ask them, I said, um, why did God deliver you into captivity? Some of them get kind of angry with that answer, that question. Sometimes we do, and we think, why did why is God allowing me to go through these hard times? And in Jeremiah 29, it actually says why. Um, number one is because that of the idolatry. Number two is not that. It's a softer answer because God wants Israel to evangelize, to share the good news of their God in captivity. Sometimes people are allowed to go to jail because God wants them in there to share the good news, and they do. We have the greatest evangelists that come out of jail times. Can you believe that? And we see here, you know, during this time, we have a great evangelist. We have we have those that in the midst of their captivity, they're standing for the true and living God. How about Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego in the fiery furnace or Daniel in the lion's den? And then Daniel standing up before Nebuchadnezzar and before the, the Persian Persian kings of Darius and Cyrus the Great and whosoever. Or what about Esther and Nehemiah at the end of the captivity standing um, to Artaxerxes? Um, quite a deal. So we have a reason sometimes. Sometimes people go into jail and they really, really don't know why they're in jail. You know, and maybe it is for them to find Jesus. And maybe it is for them to give the gospel. Because what a place. My husband always says, you know, that's a secret place for you, Marianne. It's a fishing pond that you go to every week. and Because the Bible says that we can be fishers of men. And so I'm fishers of women because I go to the women's can um, tank, the women's top tank, you know, top security tank, you know, um, maximum, they call it. But God, he opens the eyes of those in those dark places. And then um, 70 years. Why 70 years? And I told you before. Well, that was a specific number because you see, God had told them in Leviticus that the Jews needed to um, farm their land for six years. And the seventh year, they were supposed to just let it alone. A couple reasons. First, it would replenish the land so the land wouldn't be farmed too much. We know that. And that was good for the land. So it was a good thing. But they didn't want to do that because they said, we don't want to do that. It's, we're going to miss out for an extra year. But then another thing he said, he said, leave that land. So when the seedlings come back in, on the natural seedlings come back in, the poor, the poor people and the stranger can come through your land and let them feed the poor with that, on, on that in that year. So they gleaned the harvest during the year, the harvest that would come back. So there was some reason God wants to teach him to be givers, and God wanted to teach him the Sabbath and how to rest in him and trust in him. They didn't do that for 490 years. So in 490 years, you have all, all that time, and you know what it adds up to? They owed God 70 years. Yeah, kind of, what a deal. He, they, they, they owned God. Consequently, it says, while you are in Babylon, I will refresh the land physically. So he used that time to refresh the land. Other reasons we're in captivity sometimes protect us. And actually, they, they may have protected, protected um, Israel in captivity because the, the Babylonians, they were actually pretty nice to them and let them do their own thing sometimes and let them have their own families and everything. They weren't like the Assyrians. Now, maybe if they stood, stayed in the land, uh, maybe they would have been invaded. Maybe they would have been invaded by, the, by Assyrians. Again, just like the 10 northern tribes. Maybe God was protecting them. Maybe God was directing them into new ways and new places for such a time as this. God has different reasons that he allows us to go into captivity. But in that time, he softens our heart. 
either that or we go totally away from him. Some of them do. But I find in the jail, sometimes those jail times are times where the women start reading the Bible and God starts soften, really softening their heart. Their heart. Psalm 137 says, Shall we hang up our harps? Shall we forget God? Shall we, shall we um, refuse to sing? No. He said, No. Sing, sing of me in, in the land of captivity. Sing those songs, those hymns. Let them hear them so they'll know me. And um, idol worship will fall off, which it did in that remnant that went back to rebuild the temple. You see, the people, the heathen people, the people in, in the nations, the Babylonians, were curious about a God who actually loves prisoners. See, the gods they knew and made up didn't love anything. They were just greedy gods um, with lust and pride and greed and all these things. But to really see a God that would love prisoners, really see a God that would love the sinners, they hadn't seen that. So in captivity, um, they would, in captivity, the Israelites would show forth their God. And then the Babylonians would be very, very curious. So, you know, when we're in captivity, when I say we're going through trials, maybe not in jail, but maybe have you maybe have a have to have a quiet time for a while because you got in trouble for something or something like that, or or I don't know. Maybe you're just going through a hard time. You know, let's get out our harps. Let's get out, let's get out our guitars, let's get out our pianos and violins, and let's sing hymns to the Lord. That's what you can do. That's what you can do in captivity. I'm going to go on with the rest of my lesson about um, the part is, well, what did God say? Jeremiah told him exactly what they were supposed to do in captivity, that God had told him. So that's what I did when I go in the jail. I say, God tells you, knows, I was going to tell you today exactly what you're supposed to do in captivity after you come and surrender your life to him. So find out more in the next video.